it just just became 45 minutes of material <laughs> but here's the kicker since it was being recorded on a cassette there, there are two sides of a tape on a cassette right so you and so they ended up making 22 minutes and 28 seconds worth for each side of the tape so technically technically it's a double EP and I say this because it still appears as an EP in the artist page and it's making me a bit crazy I mean since this since CDs came out those kind of tags became obsolete you have singles EPs from one hour two hours it doesn't really matter it's just like a commercial marketing term if maybe if you want just one song and a bunch of remixes a single or if you want one song with some bonus content it's an EP right now this release has 45 minutes of content unique content not like repeated remixes or whatever so prepare yourself for 45 minutes of content of music right I, I, I started to notice that while my front face looks fine my profile if I look at it it looks serious so if I'm going to look at my window I'm going to do something like this you are never going to see my profile ever again and yeah this is a record an album an EP of Vaporwave Vaporwave it is a very I mean it is an interesting genre conceptually speaking conceptually speaking <laughs> it's a genre full of you know longing of melancholy of nostalgia <laughs> okay the music starts with this feeling with this feeling of nostalgia but the thing is that it quickly swaps and adds the dance beat you know it's a this a beat that is more energetic and it has this part of melancholy but the music gets more busy it gets busy as another song joins in and then it takes over the track completely it basically turns it into a more upbeat song here i wrote fireworks because i like to write my thoughts as i listen to music the first time and then i organize it but i'm not sure what i meant with fireworks here i was listening to the track again to see if i could make sense of it but yeah i listened to it and i say yeah fireworks <laughs> yeah it's fireworks so yeah this is a vapor vapor or vapor of fuck have i been pronouncing vapor wave wrong all this time so yeah this is a vapor wave album and i feel so yeah, this is a Vaporware album, but I feel it works more with the Blunder Phonic set of sampling than the Vaporwave set of sampling. I don't know if that makes sense, but the second set already has so many sensations charged into it. I feel a purple, a purple, yeah, it's a, it's a purple color because sometimes I, you can usually I just associate purple with Paperweb. It's an interesting sensation. The sample music seems to be um, New Jack Swing. So sorry, I just I don't know those genres very well, but it's it's nice because the beat is a bit, the beat is a bit, but the melody is wistful and melancholic, and the songs switch seamlessly between melancholy and happiness. It's a very deep exploration of memory. So yeah, this album is not so much about the atmosphere. I mean, it has a lot of atmosphere, a lot. But the emotions are brought into the foreground instead of the atmosphere. The third track is a single interlude. We have this radio background and the vocals play and play, but they feel like stuck in time because they're in a loop. It's a loop. While the beat that accompanies the vocals feels ethereal and calming and happy. So it's really interesting how this Single loop combines passion, you know, of the vocals with the more chill and ethereal parts of the music. 
you you could say it's like a more optimistic memory a memory about something passionate you did long ago and then you remember it fondly and it makes you smile okay maybe i'm trying to add so much of my interpretation into the songs but what i'm trying to say is that this track took me strongly i felt like a deep connection into it uh, it was like oh you damn it and the fourth track is also a loop the vocals are stuck on a loop as well but the same seem to evolve around it so by now you, you must have realized what this album is really about a lot of paperware albums and releases focus on the atmosphere and keep that atmosphere going as long as possible because when you get into the atmosphere you can fall into a trance that but that that but this album is not like that we have all these sample songs one after the other but all the parts that are used are not only used to create atmosphere but to create a college of collage collage of emotions and memories so it is not just like a DJ mix of dance beats and the catchy music, but also a DJ mix of emotions. I mean, yeah, all music plays with emotions to give you a very vivid painting of something. But what I'm trying to say with this genre, and especially with this record, is that it plays an intricate game of memory. Well, yeah, well, not necessarily nostalgia. For me, it will be nostalgia also for a time that I didn't live because I didn't I wasn't around by the 80s and 90s so I'm not just remembering parts of my past but also uh, uh, times I didn't live there, there must be a word for that let's see Anemoya and hey now that I mention it yeah Anemoya it's actually something that experience a lot. I think, I think, I mean, the world changes so much and there are things that I just never experienced. There, were, there was a world here already and so many people lived and so many things happened. You know, so Animoia is about experience the past or well, an image of the past. Yeah, yeah, actually, Anemoya can just be really, really beautiful. So, yeah, Anemoya is not just about living your past, but living another lives, past lives. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little flowery now, but I will argue that Anemoya is also an interesting thing to experience. Probably even more than nostalgia, because with Anemoya, you're actually using your imagination instead of just trying to remember things. You know, suddenly all those retro genres like Vaporwave, Synwave, just suddenly became more interesting to me. <laughs> I, I admit, I was a bit harsh sometimes. I was like, yeah, Synwave, Vaporwave. It's like something from the past, a bit pre-contextualized. But, I mean, it's fine, it's fine. So yeah, now I'm thinking that there is a lot more magic with taking things from the past as there is a lot of more worlds that you can create with images of the past right the album uh, sorry so yeah the fifth track is also rejoicing of the past there is always a tint of sadness but there is a sad it's a sadness that it, the song receives fondly the sixth track is really ethereal. I mean, you have in the background these distorted vocals and in the foreground, the, the background, and in the, in, in the center you have the clean vocals sing to you, while the background distorted vocals enter on a loop. And little by little, the, vocal, the clean vocals become more seductive. You don't notice it, but slowly the track takes you into this trance and it becomes more hypnotic. It's probably, I think that this, the sixth track is probably my favorite of the record so far because how confident and suave it feels. This track is just pure synergy. It's so suave, it's so confident. Just, I love it. The seventh track is a bit, it's a bit of a change of pace, a bit of change of sound sounds like 
either AOR or glam rock. And it's actually very refreshing. It's a very energetic song that still feels melancholic. The emotions of music like AOR can be really magic as well because it's a very anthemic genre. It's an anthemic genre, but it's also a very melancholic genre. What this album does with those songs is that the theater oppressive sound and the whole song becomes dreamy. I said that I usually associate Paperweight with purple, but this song particularly, particularly feels like they had a lot of colors. The A track is also one of the most colorful songs of the record. It has all these little sounds, uh, just details, while being really energetic. It feels like a party song. Yeah, yeah, this is a party song, but a party song built by the pink fog of memory. I said it was colorful, but it's, it's picked by a pink fog. The pink fog of memory. Think about a party song, but a party song that you are remembering, or a party song about a party you had long ago. That that's how the eight track feels. It feels to me. I don't know. It just it's it's, 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 it's a very interesting. <laughs> this record is neat. This record it's deep. The ninth track, ninth, 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 ninth. It's kind of like a love song, and the production is just beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful. This music is not just a stereo, but I like I like music that you can feel and each extreme of your ear instead of just inside your head. I mean, even now, more that I'm using in your monitors, I feel more things inside my head. If there is something I love, it's a really abrasive, wild sound. And it's a wild sound that you can feel extreme to extreme. There, there are some sounds that I feel here, like... In all the album, in all the album is like that. It's just fantastic. The song itself, it's probably also an AOR song, probably. It feels anthemic and emotional. But the production is ethereal and soothing. So even if the original song was rock, uh, you probably won't recognize it because it's just reconstructed beautifully to this synth pop psychedelic sound. Track 10, track 10 has one single idea. It's also a short track, but it has one single idea that hits really deep. It's a loop in its most melancholic but it feels like that moment when the person realizes something about their past. It's, I think they're saying, it is not too late to turn without. Uh, yeah, I know I cannot sing. No need to remind me. <laughs> but yeah, it feels like um, one of those melancholic epiphanies. Um, yeah, because you're realizing something or maybe it's a memory of a, you realizing something. It's it's a it's a it's a puzzle, a game of memory. With memory, sometimes the past is the present, the future is the past. It's just it's time, you know. It's time to like like wow, like, wow. This song has a bit of healing. It is. It just it hits deep. It hits deep. The eleventh track starts with this post-punky, punkish big music kind of epic song guitar, like, there, there is no rhythm. Is it, isn't this the, the only song that focuses on atmosphere? What I'm saying is that it doesn't have explicit rhythm and it feels very oniric, oniric. It's the most oniric, most traditional paperwave song of the record, most ambient song of the record. And the 12th track has a similar idea to the 10th track, that is a vocal loop extended to a whole song while the rest of the music stands, evolves, evolves around it. But while the 10th track is about realization, the 12th track is more about the resolve mm -hmm. in the melancholy. And it is, it, this is done again by repeating that one single loop through the entire track. So it's about resolve in the memory. The 13th track also has a focus on atmosphere. And then the 14th track, the final song, is the most epic song of all the record. It's one of those huge, epic, big AOR songs, and it's looping the 
most striking parts of the song like they just know what are the most striking parts of the original song and they keep them going and going and going and even when the song is filled with this melancholy and nostalgia and emotion, it just turns into this massive celebration the samples and the loops just hitting the most emotional beats of the originals is just keep repeating and repeating and repeating it just feels very intense intense okay, radio ads play over the music and ends the dream you had while listening to the radio and the album finishes so wow just wow i mean what, what an experience what an experience man it just it hurts hard it hurts hard this album is just not an adventure this album is not just an adventure it's a complete a cathartic healing experience thank you thank you thank you thank you it was a, it was a beautiful experience i really like that spirits that was memory and anemoya and i found it very intense and yeah that's <laughs> that's it and okay so who should i rate it with who should who who okay let's who should i recommend it to who should i not recommend it to and um, i would recommend it yeah if you like paperweight just check it out it's i just think that it's not just a good record by record it's also a quite exceptional right paperweight record it's more in the intense and active listening side of things but it has all those elements and all those tricks and bits about paperweight that you will like who will i not recommend it to if you don't like paperweight actually if you don't like paperweight i will still recommend it to check it out because you're not just getting the atmosphere or a single repeated loop for a trance but a more active exploration of 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 sampling and and music and memory i keep saying that but yeah it's an exploration and a sampling of memory if you want more about the atmosphere of the paperweight genre just you probably won't like this record because it requires more active listening it's more busy it's more you know it, it's going to require a lot more of you if you don't want to feel sad or moopy or you know nostalgic or anemoic or nothing like that you probably won't like it either because it's going to ask to imagine and remember a lot so just keep that in mind and if you don't like the dreamy synth pop psychedelic production, I probably won't like it either. I mean, I thought it was beautiful because it was this wall of sound, big, like you see, like whoosh sound. But if you if you want something with that kind of emotion but with a different sound, maybe you can listen to the original AOR glam rock songs. AOR is filled with this kind of stuff, so I also recommend you to check that if you prefer a different sound with this kind of emotion and the rating the rating wait let's write this album a cassette i mean yeah it's it's a cassette i i'm picking maybe cassette because it's it it it, 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 it was put on a cassette and yeah but a cassette is a fitting rating for this record. A cassette is like something that is old school, vintage, but it's cool. You, you see the analog technology, mm. the the tape, and you know it's 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 more fragile. It may it might be distorted or it, it can be distorted easily. But that's how memory can be, right? It's it's different. So yeah, this. This album is cassette. It's a cassette. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is going to be my rating for this record. Cassette. Cassette. And yeah, it's quite a blast. Quite a blast. I I actually I started to rethink 
a lot more about paperweight. I think I want to listen more paperweight with this kind of active required, active listening required because I don't know, it kind of, kind of, kind of took, it played with my strings more, something like that. And yeah, with that ends the review by now. Still don't know how to end reviews. Just, just it's sad. I don't want to leave. I don't want to stop singing. <laughs> so many great times we have spent together. Yeah. Yeah. Say the thing. Say the thing. Say the thing. Say the thing. Okay. Let's do one, two, three, four. Goodbye, my beautiful souls. I hope that you have a really nice day. Night. Week. No, wait. Goodbye, my beautiful souls. Stay safe. Stay, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Goodbye, results. Stay safe.